Tool Collectors Association National Meet, and this is the indoor tool meet that is on Friday and Saturday. So this is going on today and tomorrow here in Peoria, Illinois. And you do have to be a member to come to these tool meets. Um, this is a uh, this is an association conference, so you have to be a member of the association as well as pay the conference fees to get in. And the tool meet is one of the big things that everyone wants to know about, but it's one of the small pieces about MWTCA. Uh, there are several talks and information throughout the day about tools and their history, um, as well as everyone here knows about things, and then there's uh, demonstrations of how tools done. We actually have the, the guy here uh, demonstrating um, coopering and making barrels and things. So today I'm going to take you through the tool show and show you some of that, and we're going to have a little bit of fun. So uh, yeah, um, I think over here we can start in. I this is in the wrong place here. If anyone has any questions, go ahead and throw them in the chat. I'll try and find them. If I don't respond to them, um, go ahead and post them again. But uh, I can only see the last couple comments um, as we go around. So turn around and actually take a look at what we got. So starting out here, we got a bunch of hand saws. I love these. These are called steeple nuts. Uh, they're raised up on here. They're an older style, but really kind of cool. Handles, tolts, miter saw, Argentina. Good to see you in here. More planes, molding planes, axes. If you see anything in here, like, you know, what is that? Or can you give me more information on that? Go ahead and throw that in the comments, and I'll try and go back and show it to you. There is, like, a 30-second to a minute long delay. Uh, but, yeah. Here are some uh, center bits. Hey, Dave, how's it going? England? Center bits are kind of fun, is that the, the center point is actually off center, and there's one spur that cuts the ring of the circle and one of back. And then here, these are interesting auger bits because they have this cut in here. Um, I, remember, I can't remember the name for these, but they actually have the, the holes here that slice the wood out and work, uh, giving a really nice clean cut. It's going to bug me. I can't remember the name of those. Some fabric for sale. Women's Auxiliary has... Oh, and there's a... We've got some larger tools over here. Some big cross-cut saws. That one's seen better days. Been sharpened a few times. Other things like that. Come on back over here. Uh, here's a machinist's cabinet. Some other Stanleys. Bedrock. Sorry? <laughs> You're doing it the right way. <laughs> Here we got some levels. There's a whole bunch of level collectors, and they'll give you all sorts of information on these and different things about ages. Oh, there's some big old wooden planes. Check out those old beauties. Gorgeous old things. Um, yes, they are all over the states. Um, and I have a map of them, and there there is one meet kind of like this in the UK. Um, if you go to handtoolfinder.com, I have listed on there places where you can buy them, or you can find things like this. Check that out. That is a beautiful router plane with this huge front on it. What was the wooden screw thing? Wooden screw thing. I don't know what you're talking about. Let me go back and take a look at it. Yeah, I don't know what you're referring to. Unless you're talking about this. That's a uh, bung holer, so you can put a hole in your barrel, and it drills the hole, and then puts in a taper here so it fits the cork. Um, kind of a fun thing that were very common back with barrel makers. Yeah, I don't know what you're talking about, sorry. Uh, let's come on back over here. Here we have whole bunch of good old tools. It's always fun to go through here and anytime you look at something you're like, you know, what is that? You can look at this and say, yeah, you can talk to the guy and say, you know, what is that? You know, and, and find out more information about it. Um, if there's something particular you want to see a price on, let me know. I, I can't give you a price on everything. Um, and everything here, um, prices here tend to be um, solidly fair. So don't expect to see um, fantastic 
prices. Don't expect to see, you know, the, the rock bottom grid deal because everyone here knows what they have. So prices here are, are fair. Um, and, and sometimes a little bit on the, the softer side of fair, unless you're getting into something really collecting. Um, on Thursdays, they have an outdoor meet. That is the, the cheaper stuff, the, the things that uh, are a little bit more, uh, they're less collectible. Inside, there are more collectible, a little more higher price items that come out today. So uh, if there's something particular you want to see a price on, let me know. Otherwise, um, I, I don't, I, I can't point out the price and everything. And everyone has something that they want to see, and so I don't know what you're wanting to see. Huh? No, you're fine. No. I like dancing. <laughs> you do this with no nails? Here, got a couple of bits. Oh, check that out with the bit pin that goes all the way through. Yeah. That's pretty. No nails on that box. I told my wife she couldn't come. <laughs> get back in the house for <laughs> Uh, there were a bunch of decorative brass planes back here. I don't know which one you're talking about. If you're talking about like this one here, I'm guessing 600 bucks, 1500. Now these ones, they're, they're an incredible collectability on them. Um, and with the brass, they're more. This one back here, yeah, 700 on that one, um, because they're 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 collectible pieces. They're incredibly rare. And very hard to come by, and everyone collecting these. <laughs> and some people like th that price of fifteen hundred is like, oh no! But I mean, it's a collectible piece, and so there are people who are more than willing to pay that price for it. Um, a good user set of hollows and rounds, or the full half set, is usually somewhere around two hundred and fifty to four hundred dollars, depending upon the quality. That's that's pretty common for a full set, for a full half set. A full set might be as much as seven hundred to uh, fifteen hundred. It's not terribly busy today, but there's still a lot of people. A lot of people collect plum bobs. Some interesting, beautiful plum bobs. And a lot of people like to collect marked tape measures. So those are a lot of here. Uh, everyone, uh, Midwest Tool Collectors is about collecting tools, not about user tools. So it is a good place to find user tools. Uh, check this out. This is a, a set of arches. So you have a whole set of radius here, inside and outside. Kind of a, a cool set. Coming on this way. <laughs> Stanley 386 with a box. Man, you don't come across those very often. 175 bucks. That's actually pretty good. Last one of those I saw was like uh, 250 bucks. So yeah. With the box becomes a collector's piece, even without the box. Oh, here, check this out. We got the handle for the, and I was looking at this yesterday and trying to remember what it was. Seeing it without the handle, it threw me off. The uh, plan, Stanley 74 plane. And the handle locks the into a pin. That pin way back in there holds into this rod here. And this allows you to plane floors while standing up. I wish I had that when I did my wood floor. A couple Stanley number 12 compass planes. There's a lot of, uh, of back saws here today. You usually don't see a lot of back saws, but there's quite a few of them here today. Here's some uh, molding planes. Oh, you're asking about hollows and rounds. Here is a set uh, hollows and rounds, Albany, New York, uh, 1395. Yeah, it's a bit on the steep side, unless there's a collector's capability to. Oh, those are in nice condition, though. And those are in really nice condition. So yeah, that's that's still a little on the steep side, but not bad. There was a set yesterday um, that was missing one pair that was for 250 bucks. Oh, check this out. A bullnose plane, a wooden bullnose plane. So they put a brass piece in the front just to uh, put the shoe in front of the uh, the, the blade. 
auger set? Sorry? <laughs> Travel points? How did the talk go yesterday? Oh, the talk went fantastic. We did basically a big Q&A live where people could come up and play with tools and have a good time. Oh, here's another 74. Oh, that one has the original handle with the actual uh, totes on it. That is kind of cool. It's this whole long thing, the, the plane sits on the ground and you have a handle so you can plane the floor standing up. Family 45, original box, set of cutters. Why? Oh, an aluminum. Okay. This is a collector's piece, an A45. It's an aluminum body. That's cool. Um, that's cool. Goodbyes. Yeah, yeah, no, we're doing a live thing. Slide by you here? Sure. Come around this side. Oh, we got more over here. I missed. <laughs> here is an 11 and a half. These you don't see very well. Oh, 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 here we go. Here we go. Stanley number one. I'll give you an idea of size. That's a Stanley number one. And before you scoff at 650 bucks, that is the second cheapest price I've ever seen on a Stanley number one. And that is really, 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 really good. I think I might buy that and paint it blue. <laughs> yeah, that, that's cool. Everybody's got a Yeah, you got to have one. Jerry Chisels, Scrub Lane. Oh, that's kind of cool with the uh, painted brass polished out. That's pretty. That is pretty. The number 31. Huh. I think it was used maybe once and then set aside. The only thing missing is the box. Yeah. <laughs> Regular knives, lots of good knives. More levels, oh, here's all the spoke shapes. Here's where all the spoke shapes went. Let's see if there's a, another falls, no. Come around this way, here's some scraper planes. 60, 81, 12, I think it's an 81. Yeah. Now here's a homemade scraper plane. Is that factory made? Yeah, one's at. I oh, I didn't see the, the cane on it. One's, this is the EC Atkins. Huh. And the other one, I forget who's on there. Tooth. Japanese plane. Thirty five bucks. Thirty. See, I'm looking for a really junky plane, really, really rusted up that I can do a restoration video on. Some great old ones. Five dollars each. A bunch of saw sets and other things in here. Clamps, rules, measures. Let's see, did I miss anything over there? Nope, let's go around to the next spot. And we are having fun. <laughs> I love coming to these. You may be wondering where Arthur is at. He's actually, uh, let's see, he's sitting right over there on a chair. I don't know if you can see him in the video, but he's 
He's walked around with me enough today. He said, Daddy, can I just sit down and play with my tablet? I said, okay, yeah, you can sit and play with your tablet. <laughs> so let's see what we got over here. <laughs> no, shoot a live video. <laughs> if there's anything you see, let me know. I'll go back and take a look at it. As long as I know what you're talking about. If anyone's looking for hand plane, there are uh, quite a few of them here today. <laughs> so. Sixty bucks for a nice user. Number eight. Or oh eight. <laughs> these are uh, these are the Ohio. Uh, um, no, these aren't the Ohio. No, those are Bailey's. No, I mean, he, he had a uh, uh, a set yesterday. I was talking about. Oh. More compass planes. Come around this way. I'll keep it up here then. <laughs> some transitionals down there. Let's come around this way and take a look at some of those transitionals. Oh, uh, I got these old plow planes. Oh, no. There's another table over there with a whole bunch of plow planes I want to take a look at. And here's uh, Stanley 45s in the box. Or no, these are the. Uh, combination planes. Another Stanley phone. Anyone looking for Robert Plane? He's, he's marking them down, so they had, had a price on all of them, but all the prices have been marked off. And, uh, yeah. So, router planes, and they all have irons. Oh, except for that one. That one doesn't have an iron. Plum bobs. So many things to buy. So little money. Here's a Stanley 48 a swing arm. So this will actually rotate around. And right now it'll cut the tongue. And if I pull the pin and swing, spin this around, it'll cut the groove all with one plane. So I can cut a tongue and groove with one tool. That's your tool you're talking about, man. Yeah. This is a lot of fun. Here's another 12 and a half. What do you want for that one? The 12 and a half, he marked off the number, so no price on there. Okay. He's, he wrote a number on everything here, but everything's been scratched off. Yeah. What is this? A 12 and a quarter. I've never seen a 12 and a quarter before. That is cool. So it's like the 12 and a half, but narrower. And what did he have on this one? Probably marked it off. No, he has 275 on that. So a collector's piece indeed, but kind of cool. I've never seen a 12 and a half before. Some Stanley number twos. Prices are all scratched off on those. Ooh, okay, here we go. Oh, yeah. That's pretty. So this is a, uh, a shooting board plane. You can sit on there. It has the, uh, the hot dog handle. So you can slide along there and hold it on its side. One of these days I want to get one of those. It doesn't have a price marked on it. Here's a, a dowel maker. Uh, got the handle, has one cutter. Does he have a price on this? So I've been looking for a dowel cutter. And this, so the dowel goes through here, set a stock that fits the square stock, and it runs through here and the dowel cutter will cut it and then it can run all the way through here, it's hollow. So you can get the dowel coming out the other end. It gives you a really nice clean cut dowel. Tools in box. Woohoo! Another shoes tool kit. Uh, we got more over here. <laughs> and there's Arthur. <laughs> He's eating his peanuts and having a good old time. 
more advertising tape measures. Spoke shaves. It looks better on. Now check this out. Stanley uh, 150 year set. Comes in a box. Here's some fun brass tools. Check out these pretties. <laughs> oh, that is pretty. I don't even want to look at the price on that thing. Chasing hammers. Some more tools in box. Egg beaters. A couple more router planes. 80 bucks, 90 bucks, but they come with both cutters. That's not a bad price for two cutters. Chisels. Auger sets. There's a whole bunch of marking gauges. Check those out. Whole bunch of spoke shapes. All right, let's come around over here. Oh, here's the rust buck. I'm always looking for the rusty stuff, things to restore and clean up. Big old hand sledge. Oh, those are cool. Old welding goggles. <laughs> Ten bucks. Bakelite. Oh, that's cool. Almost get those and turn them into a steampunk costume. Hammers, mallets, a couple, of, a couple hatchets, some stair saws. Let's see, what do we got down here? Stanley number five, fifty dollars. Why in the world are you fifty bucks? I got some on the sale too. Oh, five dollars. That's different. Maybe we should come back to that one. That one's got a good rust on it. That'd be a good one to restore. Plow plane. That's not bad price on that one. That's pretty. I still tape it. Yeah, shooting live. A lot of people were asking for uh, cutters. Check out all those you set up. Yeah, these are for the insides of barrels. So it flips upside down and the edge of the barrel runs on here and this will cut the groove that the lid will fit into. Draw knives. You ever looking for parts? So can't find an original knob or tote, lever cap. Where is that particular screw? This is the place to find it. There are a lot of people here who have just had buckets and buckets of plane parts. Let's come on over here. Bailey Tool Company. Okay, that one's cool. This is from the Bailey Tool Company before Bailey joined Stanley. Uh, he made his own tools, the Bailey Tool Company. Ooh, looking forward to getting over there. Hey, that, that there, that, that's slick. Oh, pretty. You make these? Yes, sir. Matheson style bottle plow plants. Newly made. Yes, sir. That is here. Check it out. What is this? Uh... The center's tool works. Oh, I like the business cards. Yeah, aren't those fun? They're actually wood veneer. That is cool. Nice work, man. Thank you. <laughs> and of course, the tool, tool chest. Of course. <laughs> you gotta show the chest that makes the tools. All right, here we go. Set of chisels. Some big old ones. More chisels. Now here's some more hardware. Looking for that particular screw, that particular nut. Actually, I might come back through here. I'm looking for a couple adjusters. There's a nice sergeant. 
That is really clean. Compass plane. Whole bunch of block planes. Thumping whackers. Some more scraper and planes. Oh, check out these little pretties. Addy. Look at all the bits. Marking gauges. Okay, it's uh, continue on. So, give you a little idea of the field here. We started over here and we went down through there. And then we came up this row. Now we're going down this row. We still have that row and that row and that row and that row and one more on the other side. So, yeah, we still got some fun to go. Ah, yeah, Ohio. <laughs> So these are all part of the a study, uh, Ohio Plains. See so all has them marked out on here of the number, the number in the, the study. It's kind of cool. So if you're collecting Ohio Plains, you're missing out today. Congratulations from Brazil. Oh, thanks. What's that? I'm saying. Oh, 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 sorry. <laughs> I got to wash my shoulders going. <laughs> This machine cannon model shows a 158 year old cherry wood, 150 year old cherry wood patina. Oh wow, so that's a model of a cannon 158 years ago. That is cool. So many fun old tools. There's the, one of the things that I love about coming to these meets is that there are so many things to learn. And there are lots of times we're looking around at things and what is that? There's always someone around who can answer that and help you out. So some more levels. Oh, check it out, an old lock. So a door handle, beautiful door handle to begin with, but you can see the lock on here. Check that out. That is cool. 195 bucks. Oh, this is this is a shooting board, but it is designed for flattening out the top of the board, so you can make sure that you're always planing down to the same thickness, so that can sit on there. That's kind of cool. I'm trying to remember what the name of it. I want to say panel plane, but it's something else. You don't come across those very often. They're really cool. Little jeweler's, jeweler's lathe. I love this old uh, um, scroll saw here. Beautiful, thin little wood, well put together. Oh, and here's a pretty infill. Check out the banding on that, that is really cool. Here we go. Yeah, $1,100, and that's, that's pretty common for these. They are they are in high demand, and uh, they they regularly go for over a thousand dollars easily. So it looks like expensive. It's a collector's piece. And then you got this one. This is an old shooting board plane, old old shooting board plane, but it's an infill. So it has metal, 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 but then it has wooden underneath here. Stanley 62, 295. Brace and bit. Oh, here we go. Check out these braces over here. These are pretty. I want to get a couple of these sometime, or at least one of these sometime from Sheffield. They weigh a ton because they're mostly brass. They're basically an infill, uh -huh. but they're really, really cool. Oh, that one's pretty. I like that. Homemade cabinet scraper. Check out these axes over here.
or Cooper's tools. Gary Johnson's table. Let's come on around over here. Block lanes, block lanes, block lanes, block lanes, block lanes. There's always block lanes around. More hand saws. Joiner, wooden planes. If I'm running by anything, let me know and I'll go back and take a look at it. I feel like I've missed a couple of comments, but I don't think I have. There's an old powder horn. Display only, not for sale. <laughs> oh, those are pretty. Oh, yeah, here we go. Check this out. Sixteenth century, beautiful. Look at the carving on the side of this. Yeah. <laughs> don't make things like they used to. No. <laughs> they dated 17 something there. She stayed in 1684. Very nice iron work. Huh. Uh, got the date on the front of it there. 1684. Yes. Here, check out these. Water plane hex too. Hi Arthur. Yeah. What? Do you want to walk with me or you want to stay and play? I'm just saying, I think the sun needs me to fix something here. Ooh, there we go. What you got, bud? Say hi, Arthur. We're good when I do. Hi. Are you, you still playing? You still playing? You okay? You want to walk with me? Oh, you want to stall that? Here, let me stall it. Except. Yeah, you can play the Pink Cats game. Have fun, bud. You're doing really good. <laughs> he got to come along with me because the other two are in school and uh, allows, uh, uh, my wife can watch them because there's after school watch. Uh, but we just needed someone to watch Arthur, so he got to come along with me. So let's turn back around and get back to this. Uh, let's see, we got more spoke pointers, corn cutters, tenon cutters. So standard tenon cutters, as well as a whole Those bunch of different standard. types of adjustments. I said standard, not. Oh, I thought you said standard. No. I'm sorry. I no, they got. You, just holler. Check that out. I like these. Now, there's a lot of one. You want to see got a video devoted to them? I want to do a few more on that. Sorry, we're live on here, so. Yeah. <laughs> if you had it, would you? I'd like Here, it's coming around this way. Here we got uh, draw knives. I want to get a, a fold up draw knife. I haven't. Uh, haven't gotten one yet, although I'm not a huge draw knife collector. There's a lot of people who get into draw knives and they have thousands and thousands of draw knives. Hammers, plain adjusting hammers, more. There's a beautiful plot plane. So I hope the image is pretty good on here. We're inside and I think my cell service is pretty decent, but you never quite know. Coots, uh, compass plane. Now, what is this? I don't know, and I don't want to pull it apart with one hand. But it is sure is pretty. Look at that thing. I don't know what that is. Knife. Brace yourself. We got races. And here we got some more back saws. Some really nice back saws here today. Back saws are a little harder to come by, but uh, when you find them, they're here. So let's uh, wrap up, 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 up. 
There, we finished that row. Let's go back and do another row. <laughs> I'm having a lot of fun. I hope you guys are because this is just, uh, they have two of these national meets every year and they are by far the best place in the world by hand tools because you just you can't find anything quite like this anywhere else. There are local meets all across the U.S. Um, it's, they're just a lot of fun. Yeah, really cool. Turn that back around, sorry. Let's see, we got between pulls and wrenches. Numbers, another adjustable tin and cutter. Here's an A5, Stanley aluminum. <laughs> Aluminium. Sewing machine. And, uh, here. A little bit of everything. Plum bobs, chisels, Stanley 55, another Stanley 55. But uh, 450 to that one with all the cutters. Looks like everything's in there. Let's see if he has a price in this one. That one's got everything. Oh my. Okay, another Stanley 55. That one has the box. Number 45, an old one there. Another 45, a whole bunch more planes. Please send to California. <laughs> I'm actually going to be in California next week. I'll be in uh, Hollywood for a couple days. And then we, <laughs> here we got, these are hollow and rounds that you can put on the Stanley 45. So your Stanley 45 can do hollow and round work, which I would want to get one of these, um, but I never have. Which is you have on 600 bucks. For that set, and that's that's a pretty going price. They're 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 hard to come by, and when you do find them, they're just they're, they're rare. Set of irons, and there there is an entire collecting association in California called PAST, P-A-S-T, Pacific Tool Collector, something like that. Um, there's a link to it on my website, handtoolfinder.com. But they do meets where they have tool sales um, in California. You gotta drive a bit for them because they're not everywhere, but they are around. Sets of braces and bits, saws, miter box saw. Yeah, I don't know why people in California uh, complain about driving six, seven hours for a tool meet when I drive six, seven hours to get to a tool meet around here. But I still, I get far away from here. Most of them are, are a bit farther than that. Usually, if the tool meet is within five to six hours, I, I go to it. Uh, but yeah, everyone's a little different. But there are there are several meets out in California. So the uh, next one. Oh, I'm moving to Japan before? Oh, that's sad. I'm sorry. If you need anyone near Hollywood, Hollywood, let me know. But uh, yeah, I'm only, I'm only going to be in Hollywood for. Um, a really short time and I'm pretty busy, so it's gonna be interesting. All right, let's uh, get back to this. So yeah, check out this old beast. That is nifty. The types of things you don't find. You rarely see things like that unless you're around meat like this. Another one, 112. Really nicely cleaned up. Another stand 55. Oop, down, sorry. I don't think he has a price on that one. Third Coast Tool Fest. I'll have to look that up. I might head over to that one. Anyone in Michigan? Let's see what we got over here. More saws, more planes, more planes. There's a bunch of uh, bull nose and shoulder planes. Another 
Man, so many interesting tools. Let's see what we can get in here. Is there a black candled one? There's in some there? more uh, irons. Oh, yeah. What? Oh, no, you're fine. No, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry? Oops. It's always fun wiggling around people with a camera. <laughs> sure, yeah. I'll stick my camera in between people anytime. <laughs> Oh, the notch. Oh, check out all those old Stanleys. Those are all yeah. gorgeous shape. Beautiful clean. <laughs> Some uh, molding planes. Did I miss a couple? Greetings from France. How's it going? Plow plane blades. So, yeah, here's the uh, Stanley 4555 irons. So I have a set in all of the irons. So I assume that someone just replaced that one. More molding plane. <laughs> Ooh, how much does he want for those? Five dollars? No, sixty-nine dollars. I was gonna say five dollars. I'll take it right now. <laughs> Some transitionals. Bunch of braces. Coping saws. Let's come on over here. Wheel right. That sounds like a lot of fun. I, I was wanted to make. Uh, I want to do a video on making wheels one day. I haven't got around to it. Here's some plow planes. There's a table over there farther that has plow planes. I'm looking forward to showing. Oh, here I want to show you this. This is pointed out to me earlier. This plane. I don't know if you can see it on here. There's a dimple right here where the user was holding it and used so much that he wore it out. Almost an eighth inch deep dimple here where his thumb is constantly rubbing into the wood. So this plane was loved and used so much that the user has his thumb there the same place every time. Let's see, oh yeah, this one up here. This is a gorgeous, gorgeous end fill. And uh, this is just, yeah, beautiful. But he was pointing out something on the other side of this. Let me turn around here. Yeah. This one was beautifully kept. As you can see again here, there's a dimple here where the user's finger, and I got my wrong hand on here, the user's finger would rub in there, and you can see the dimple wear on that. And then a hand on the, the front knob where it was worn specifically how he's used this so long that the finger has rubbed into the rosewood on this. Absolutely gorgeous. Here's a few rifflers, riflers, however you want to say it. Molding planes. Quality. I'm sorry. Yeah, I never got around to doing the wheel. Thank you. <laughs> oh, I've never seen a brass back miter saw. No, that's not miter, because that's got a taper on it. That is a huge tin saw. That is pretty. Yeah, there's a couple people here who came all the way out from California. I met one person here from France. Um, so literally people travel around the world to come out to these tool meets. Oh yeah, looking forward to being over here in a minute. We're going to be looking at these plow planes all over here that are absolutely gorgeous. <laughs> Check out this shiny. Sorry, I'm going to shove that print. <laughs> There's a uh, various plow plane. Hey, uh, not plow plane. Um, um, what's the thing called? It's called a uh, uh, rider plane. There's the word. Some interesting spoke shapes. Oh, check out that collection. Leave the digging boxes. Dig through. You never know what, what treasures you're gonna find. Come on this side. It's always fun to play through these. I mean, like, 
How often do you come across a tool like that? That's just absolutely gorgeous. What's the price on the router plane? Uh, Veritas, the, the Veritas router plane, I think he had uh, 153. There are, there are a lot of router planes here today. Usually there's only like four or five, maybe a dozen at most, but uh, yesterday there were almost 20 that I saw. I saw one for 25 bucks, didn't have any of the, the cutters and it was missing the connector. Yep, uh, East Peoria. We'll be here today and tomorrow. You have to be a member to come. Um, so this is this is an association convention. So you have to be a member of the association, and then you have to pay a convention fee. Um, so the, the sale, though, it's what a lot of people come here for. Uh, the sale is kind of a sideline to all the information and the classes and training and things like that that come along. Um, so it is an association and a convention, but well worth it. Um, let me see if I can get in here. I love those old Stanley marking gauges. I want to get one of those one of these days. Let's see what we got over here. Corn chucker. Mixes geodary chocolate along here. Trying to get people to buy things. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, he had something here I want to show off. Oh, it's over there. I'll get it, man. <laughs> Uh, music stand. <laughs> ah, thanks. Um, there isn't much in like the Louisiana area, but there is. Uh, there's one meet in Georgia. Turn around, sorry. There's there's one meet in Georgia called the Peach Meet. It's in I want to say January. Um, and there are a couple places on the map in Alabama and Georgia, but there's nothing in the Louisiana area. Um, and I'd, I'd love to see like this. If you, if you want a meet near you, contact the Midwest Tool Collectors and set up a meet. Uh, these tool sellers will travel around the world, <laughs> around the, the United States to sell tools. I actually had a guy in Texas just last year. He's like, there's nothing around me. So he found a place to host it and set up the, the, the tool meet and people came out to sell tools. And I actually went down there to publicize it. Um, and so now it's a regular tool meet right next door to him. So yeah, if you want something like this, set one up. Uh, you just need to have a place. We need to have someone on the ground who can actually do the on the ground organization. But the tool meet will get the, 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 the sellers to come out for it. So um, definitely, if you want one near you, set it up. Yeah, he was pointing these out. Piece of silverware that we don't think about anymore. It's for pushing baby food. So sliding baby food onto the spoon to feed. Let's see, what else we got over here? There's just a little bit of everything on this table. You never know what you're going to come across. Pencil sharpeners, marking gauges, pin cushions. OK, let's come around here and look at some of these plow planes. And each one of them then has information on it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I've several, several of them were in the book, too. A wooden book? In my husband's book. Oh, wooden plow books, yeah. Yeah. And I'm trying to mark the ones. There's several of them. Oh, and you can see uh, page 38. That's yeah. cool. These are absolutely gorgeous. Oh, you can see the different infills and how things have changed. Just beautiful. Ivory tips. Excuse me, bone tips. Shouldn't call them ivory. <laughs> uh, check out the tips on these. Beautifully shaped down. Plow planes for putting groove in them. I do. One of these years, I want to build a really nice plow plane and, and put some brass work into it and really detail it out. Um, yeah, it'd be a lot of fun to, to 
play with that. I mean, just the little details on like this, the step down from the handle of the shaft has this reverse OG in here that's gorgeous. I mean, you could just do the step down like this, or you could add a little bit of flair to it. Just put that little detail in there. Really not going to change anything its function, but beautiful, beautiful work. And yes, he is selling all of these as they're part of his collection. Finally getting to the point where selling them off. Even ones like this, I mean, just a simple screw holding the bar in place. Oops, sorry. Beautiful. Here's a whole pile of chisels, crankshaft chisels. Good to the... Um, what should I do if I'm traveling and going to one of these meets, but just one time? Um, if you, you have to be a member of the Midwest Tool Collectors. So at, at, uh, at the tool meets, you have to be a member of the Midwest Tool Collector, um, and you can do that online. You can join there, or you can join at the door. So if you um, and, and have the day here, um, and that's the way uh, there, are, there are tool collecting organizations all across the United States and world. There's a tool collecting organization in Australia. Um, there's one in the UK. There's one in Canada, uh, but there's one in California, there's one down south, there's one on the east coast, and they don't do quite as much. The Midwest Tool Collectors is by far the biggest of the tool collecting groups. Um, but they all have the same thing. They're an organization that you you, you get a membership with the organization that comes with um, regular periodicals and things like that. But then also, then the members get invites to the tool meets. So these aren't wildly publicized, they're just invites to the tool meet to their members. Uh, so if you want to have those, they're on there. But they are all listed on the website, mwtca.org, and I try to collate them all on my website at uh, uh, handtoolfinder.com. So if you want to see that and see if there's anything around you, go to handtoolfinder.com. So let's get back to this. Chisels, 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 chisels. These ones all have a, uh, a, leather, uh, a leather top on them. Kind of cool. Yeah. Full set of chisels. Those are more collector's chisels than user's chisels. But uh, yeah. Earth is still over here having fun. I want to show you this before we go on. He is uh, demonstrating today coopering. So he has all the tools here and you know, talking through the whole process. And so you can actually come here and see what he's doing. So yeah, this is, oh, that's kind of cool. I'm going to try this sometime. Making a uh, um, canteen, barrel canteen. That'd be kind of cool. Greetings from Germany. Say one in the UK. Um, go to handtoolfinder.com. I believe, I believe off the top of my head that there is a tool collecting organization in the UK. It's on my, my website, handtoolfinder.com. I have a whole list of tool collecting organizations as well as a map with several places in the UK. Um, and I have found, I think it's like six or seven tool stores in the UK dedicated to hand tools or have a large section of hand tools in there. Uh, so yeah, definitely go take a look at that. Particularly in south of uh, south of London, as I found a couple down there when I was down there. Uh, but yeah, they are around. Uh, let's see what we got over here. Plain parts. Those are just really plain parts, you know. Eh. <laughs> so uh, you have a hammer, right? You have a hammer. Why? Why do you have a hammer? <laughs> Why an H? We got We bought a crate years ago when we first started. Check this out with the uh, brass nose on it. That's a cool router plane. Someone just took a plate of steel, mounted two handles on it, and then put a uh, vertical shaft to clamp something to. And you got your router plane. Wooden planes? Some more molding planes. I'm not going to be able to get around this table very much. Now, when we're done going through these tables, I want to take you over and show you some of the displays and some of the history and other things like that you'll learn here. Yep, see you next time, Power. Now, this is a, a grain testing tool. So you would shove this down into the bin at different depths and sample the grain. 
and you can pull out grain from that sample and make sure nothing's wrong with it or having issues. I've been going back to work myself. <laughs> Why go back to work when you can come to a tool meet? There's another gorgeous plow plane. 225 bucks. That's pretty. Nice old spoke shapes. A Stanley number two bedrock. Ooh, a 602. Um, yeah, you don't come across those very often. How much does he have on this thing? My guess is $950. Stanley 02. It's corrugated. Yeah, that's at least a thousand. What does he have? 602, $895. Wow, a Type 3 602 corrugated. That's uh, 195 It's actually a really good price. Oh, it has a chip in it. That's why. The mouth is chipped out there. That's why it's so cheap. Yeah, you don't come across those very often. Block planes, block planes, block planes, block planes. Here's some Winchesters. Yes, Winchester made hand planes. Someone was doing a bunch of turning and having fun here, selling the turning wares. And here you can buy cookies. <laughs> Free cookies? Yes. That, that right there is why you want to come to Midwest Tool Collectors. Free cookies. Yep, homemade. Levels? Well, this show really is on the level. Non-Stanley traditionals, uh, transitionals. Hex tooth router plane. Rev-O-Knock. rev I have never heard of that plane company before. I have to look into that. Huh. Looks like they make nice planes. Hi from England. Well, I'm glad you guys like this. I always like showing these off. And uh, anytime I find a place with a lot of hand tools, they're always fun. Here's a bunch of screwdrivers and awls and such like that. Really well cleaned up. Those are nice. More transitionals. More block planes. Here's some Stanleys and others. So $5 for an Eclipse. Number five style hand plane. Remove yours. Five bucks for that hand plane. Oh, number five, not five bucks. $20, that's more like it. I was like, for something that clean? 25 bucks, Stanley plane. 25 bucks. $10. $5, $5. Here's 30 for four and a half. A five and a half C. Corrugated bottom. More planes, more levels. Oh, check out that. Stanley 55. Yeah. Set of box. Banana. Set of cutters. Oh, check out that pretty. Love it when you shine up the brass and things look happy. Huh. Check out the advancement on that with the uh, the steel screw integration on that. That's cool. So that's a, a steel platen. See, here's a uh, four and a half. Everybody's looking for four and a half. More molding planes, tonguing planes, 
grooving planes. Ulu. Now check out this. This one is cool. I saw this one yesterday. This is a tongue and groove plane, a big, 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 big tongue and groove plane. But this, so right now it's set to cut the uh, to cut the groove. But then this the shaft right here. Oh shoot, I can't show it without two hands. Let's do it here. So this plate here can come off, and when this comes off, then it turns into a a, uh, a tonguing plane. So it cuts the groove. So it's kind of an interesting design. Be able to do tongue and groove with one plane. That is pretty. That is really pretty. Anyone want molds? This is the guy that literally wrote the book on Stanley 45s. <laughs> yeah, here's the, here's the book. This is actually really cool. Uh, so it goes through all the different uh, styles. He just gave me one. I'm looking forward to diving into it. Uh, there is a, a ton on Stanley 45s, how they changed over time. And there's a, yeah, a lot of information there. Looking forward to diving into that. You can come Oh, we're back. Sorry about that. For some reason, it switched around on me. And uh, we lost connection, so I am back. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, so let's uh, get back to where we were at. <laughs> Just a second, my son is having fun with chairs. Come here, Arthur, I'll give you a new chair. <laughs> Fine. Here. Arthur's sitting here waiting with me. Here, I'm going to move this chair over here for you. <laughs> and he got up to come talk to me while the, uh, the app was off, and uh, someone took his chair from him. You can sit down, but all right, let's get back to this. And uh, sorry about the connection. You never know what the internet will be. You're fine. <laughs> okay, where are we at? Uh, right over here. Here's some more tools. Down, 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 down. There we go. Turn it around. So, lots of good braces. A beater drills. Good old chisels. Back when you could actually buy auger bits that fit braces. Now this tool here, this is for setting saws. So you can put it in there and bend the teeth over. This is a spider for uh, checking the set on a uh, crosscut saw. Come back buy one of those. So then you have the, oh, oh, here we go. This one is for um, filing the teeth down and jointing them, as well as making sure all the teeth on the crosscut saw at the same height. All the crosscut filing teeth here. Argentina, good to have you. More saw sets. Uh, there's another, uh, uh, looks like a homemade filing set, so you can set your file on there. And it runs along the plate, making sure that you, uh, you joint all the teeth on the crosscut at the right height. Uh, that's only the first part of the snapback. There's some things like this. I'm not sure what that is. Is it a pencil sharpener? No. It's things like that. I'm going to come back a little later and say, what is that? It'd be a great thing to learn. Marking gauges. Tenon cutters, spoke pointers, cone cutters, Stanley A1, scraping planes. Come around here. Oh, he want, oh, he has an app he wants me to download. <laughs> Here's books for sale. And these, these are uh, board foot rules. And so you'd actually use this to measure the width of a board or log and know how many board feet are in that piece. So you can actually see 
if it's 10 foot long and it's this wide, then there's that many board feet. Uh, kind of a, a cool setup here. Oh man, this one, 1895 foot powered lathe, 260 bucks. I'm thinking about it. <laughs> it's a bunch of parts, but uh, kind of a fun tool. This is a core box plane. This will create a round cove in uh, in a box in a, a board. Uh oh, my brother, my son has me, wants me to. Uh, yeah, you can do that. Yeah. Yep, go play it. <laughs> this is a, an ice saw. So don't don't try and cut uh, don't try and cut wood with that. Transitionals. Bunch of fun levels. You never know what you're gonna find. So many cool items. Marked measures. Rules. Here's no Stanley number one. 1,075 bucks. What do we want on that one? 375 for the corrugated jackrabbit. I do want a jackrabbit, but I don't want a corrugated one. I'd rather get one that's more of a user. Wow, a Stanley A6, an aluminum Stanley 6. Eight bucks. That's not a bad price. Not for aluminum. That's that's a good deal. Here are some crown molding planes. So to give you an idea of how wide those are. <laughs> it's a beastly plane. Number three and number four. Marple's chisels. 105 bucks for a set of Marple's chisels. That's kind of That's pretty good. Another tin and cutter. So many fun things. If you have something you have a question about, let me know. I'll go back and take a look at it. Another set of arcbits. What? Um, oh, it's not going to do it right now. Why don't you go back and play the other game? I'm almost done. Go back and play the other game. Uh, here's a, uh, a groove cutter. And this one is kind of cool because the two blades are different lengths. And so you actually have an adjustment screw here. So one blade goes this way. And this lets you to widen out the groove. Uh, except for the, the mouth has a broken off piece here. That's sad. Pretty plain. I like that. Here's a uh, barbed wire display. Anything in the box? One buck. <laughs> so those are the uh, the tools for sale. But I want to take you over here and show you some of these displays. Uh, there's some really interesting things over here. One particular that is just like mind blowing. Um, so one of the things about the Midwest Tool Collectors is that you can come here and buy tools, but it is one of the best places to learn about tools as well. Uh, so let me show you what we got here. Like this, this is a model of an eight foot tall drill press. And everything in here works. Every screw, every nut, every bolt, every gear, everything in this functions. And it's a full model of the original eight foot tall drill press. Uh, saw sharpening set up so you can actually have everything set up for the, uh, the you can set your fleam on the back here and everything on there. This is kind of a cool set. Um, oh yeah, these are uh, uh, marking hammers, round head marking hammers. So you can actually put the letters in here. 
and stamp out something into wood. So you don't heat these up, you just hit the wood with it and it stamps in the number you want. Um, oh yeah, Ohio, this is the Ohio type study. So he actually went through and said, you know, these are all of the handles as they changed over time. These are how the irons changed over time. And so it's kind of fun, you can see from earliest number sixes, how everything changed over time from mounting the frog to the handles, to the knobs, to the totes, the adjusters, and he has it in the uh, block planes as well. Just a really cool display where you can come and learn about this. Oh, check this out. This is not only a shooting board, so this slides so you can shoot, but this will also slide across and you can shoot the, the surface of a board and flatten the whole, whole thing out. So it's a, it will do all dimensions of the wood in one, basically. Um, here, there's, there's a bunch here on king cutters. This one here is on uh, um, um, double boilers and uh, going through some of those things. Here we've got, oh yes, the Stanley 45 type. Okay, this is this is crazy. So we've come around here, Stanley 45 type one. So the earliest version of it, type two, type three, type four, type five, type six, type seven, type eight, type nine, 10, tw uh, 11, and uh, 12. So you can actually go through and see how do the Stanley 45s change over time from this pretty carved design with not a lot of features, interesting design all the way down to the Type 12 that uh, is kind of considered the, the, the final model that everyone knows and loves. What model is the shooting board? Let me go back and look at that. Yes, the gristmill publications come out, and those are um, those have a ton of information. Honer's combination. Yeah, I have one. Shoot and board uh, and type high like machine. Like yeah. Board. yeah. Um, but it's mine. I wanted it without the handle. Yeah. So I paid one seventy So yeah, it's not Stanley. Not everything here is Stanley. Where is this? Um, right now it is um, right now we are in Peoria, Illinois. Uh, the next one is in um, Springfield, Iowa, if I remember correctly. Then the one after that's in Green Bay, Wisconsin. And then after that we go into Indiana. Um, and so there's two nationals every year and they are a lot of fun. Uh, but if you want to see the list of them, you can go to mwtca.org, Midwest Tool Collectors Association.org and uh, there'll be a list of that down there. Um, the website's a bit hard to get around, but once you get into it, it goes pretty well. Here's one on uh, King Cutter Tools. And then a collection of hammers. Oh, okay, we're back, I'm sorry. That, for some reason, it uh, disappeared, but there's, I was just getting to the fun part where I really wanted to show it off, and uh, for some reason, it disconnected. So I'm figuring out how to try and reconnect it. It's one of the fun things of broadcasting in, in here. But uh, so we've got all of these things. And for the five of you who are still here, this is going to be really, 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 really stinking cool. So you've got this, this whole area here with tools for sale and information about tools and all these fun things over here. And I haven't even gotten to all of these collections over here. This is, these are all tools for auction later today. Then you have the auxiliary collections. But out of all those things, the coolest thing here is right here. This is incredible. People literally died at the edge of these very pieces of steel. So here you have 18th century German, 17th century French, 17th century French, 17th century German, 17th century German, 17th century French, 18th century executioner's belt axe. So this would have been used for lopping off fingers, not just head, not heads or ears. 16th century Russian, uh, 18th century French, 17th century French, and then here they have placards showing the etching on the backs of all of these. Um, and then this one here, this is a, um, uh, what is it, where is the placard on this one? 
Oh, where did the placard go? Oh, there it is. This is a 16th and 17th entry German French beheading sword. Um, so that is, is really cool. And so they have all this information here. He has a diary of Franz Schmidt. Um, and it's a diary of an executioner talking about all the things he went through. The uh, well, How much was it? It was um, 361 executions. And it was a, a number of other uh, fingers and ears that went through. So this, these are actual executioner blades. Um, really fascinating. And then here we have the listing of all of the uh, executions taking place at the Tower of London. Who they were, what their crime was, when it was done, and where it was done. So this is one of those really neat things that uh, you don't get to see everywhere. So, yeah, and that was the last bit of this tool of this tool meet, and these are just so much fun to come to. Um, there's so much to learn, and then on top of this, there are several talks where you'll have someone who's been spending their entire life, the last 50, 60 years, collecting, uh, you know, a particular type of tape measure or something of that nature, and they'll actually be doing talks about them and going through some of the interesting things they found and the history behind them, where they were found, and the, the, the people who made them, and other things that might come along with it. And then on top of all that, you have the tool show where you can buy things. So these are well worth taking a look at. Um, if you if the Midwest Tool Collectors Association website is mwtca.org, definitely worth taking a look at. Um, and there are meets all over the world, all over the United States with MWTCA, as well as there are other collections around. Uh, so if you, uh, other collecting associations around, you can get to. So uh, if you want to see a list of all those, they're on my website, handtoolfinder.com, where I list all of the collecting associations as well as all the places I know of around the world where you can buy tools. And if you know of something that's not on that list, please send it to me. I'd love to add it to the list and put it on the map. So I think that's about it for now. And uh, yeah, we're gonna wrap this up. Let me get my son over here so we can say hi. Arthur, can you say hi? Arthur? Hi. <laughs> so I think that's about it for now. And until next time, what do you say, Arthur? <laughs> Have a wonderful